Most of the time when we talk about SpaceX's achievements, we focus on Falcon 9 landings or Starship test flights. Those rockets get the attention because they are large, loud, and easy to see. But SpaceX also operates other spacecraft that quietly handle some of the most difficult jobs in orbit. One of them is the Dragon capsule. Dragon has been flying to the International Space Station for more than a decade, and recently this same capsule achieved something that was once considered nearly impossible for a commercial spacecraft. In this video, we are going to break down exactly what Dragon did and how this single mission is changing how the International Space Station is operated. Before we go any deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos like this one. Just two decades ago, there was no company called SpaceX. When it was founded in 2002, it was a small startup with no rockets in orbit, no government contracts, and no proven technology. By 2008, the situation was critical. The global financial crisis had hit, SpaceX had already failed three Falcon 1 launches, and the company was running out of money. Elon Musk later said they could only afford one more launch. If that rocket failed, SpaceX would shut down. That last launch took place in September 2008. Falcon 1 finally reached orbit, becoming the first privately funded liquid fuel rocket to do so. Soon after, NASA awarded SpaceX a $1.6 billion cargo contract to supply the International Space Station. That contract kept the company alive. Fast forward to today, and SpaceX is no longer just launching rockets. Critical space infrastructure now depends on it. That reality is clear from what Dragon has just done. During their recent mission, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft fired its thrusters continuously for more than 19 minutes to raise the orbit of the International Space Station. This was a long, controlled propulsion maneuver applied to a structure weighing about 420 metric tons. The ISS is the heaviest object ever assembled in low Earth orbit and changing its orbit requires precise thrust and engines that can run for a long time without interruption. This burn was Dragon's fifth reboost during the same mission. One more reboost is planned before Dragon undocks and returns to Earth, bringing the total to six reboosts over roughly five months. The reason reboosts are needed is simple. Even at about 400 kilometers above Earth, the ISS experiences drag from the upper atmosphere. That drag slows the station down and causes it to lose altitude. On average, the ISS drops around 100 meters per day. Without regular reboosts, the station would eventually re-enter the atmosphere and break apart. Reboosts are not optional. They are required to keep the station in orbit. For most of the ISS program, around 80% of those reboosts were handled by Russia's Progress spacecraft. That made Progress one of the most important vehicles supporting the station. If progress launches were delayed, orbital maintenance immediately became a concern. This dependence became more risky as political relations worsened. This forced NASA to deal with a problem it hoped to solve slowly, how to keep the ISS in orbit without Russian spacecraft. Dragon is now showing that it can be done. The capsule itself is about four meters in diameter, and when combined with its trunk section, has a total length of roughly eight meters. Fully loaded, a cargo Dragon launches with a mass of about 12,000 kilograms. That matters because Dragon is now performing propulsion work on a structure that weighs around 420,000 kilograms. The spacecraft doing the pushing weighs less than 3% of the station it is moving. Cargo Dragon can carry up to 6,000 kilograms of supplies to low Earth orbit. About 3,000 kilograms of that can be pressurized cargo inside the capsule and the rest can be mounted externally in the trunk. When returning to Earth, Dragon can bring back up to 3,000 kilograms of cargo. No other active ISS cargo spacecraft has return capability. Russia's progress and other famous capsules all burn up in the atmosphere after undocking. Once they leave the station, their cargo is permanently lost. Dragon is different because it has a heat shield and parachute system that allows it to survive re-entry and splash down in the ocean. NASA uses this capability to return scientific experiments and biological samples that must be analyzed on Earth. That same capsule, designed to survive re-entry, is now also being used to perform orbital propulsion tasks while docked to the station. 
During the recent mission, Dragon remains attached to the ISS for roughly five months. Over that period, it performs six separate reboost burns. A typical Progress spacecraft stays docked for a similar length of time but usually performs only one or two reboosts. The reboost capability comes from Dragon's trunk section. SpaceX installed a dedicated propulsion kit in the trunk, separate from the capsule's main maneuvering system. This kit includes two Draco thrusters facing directly opposite the station's direction of travel. Each Draco engine produces about 400 newtons of thrust, giving the system a combined output of roughly 800 newtons. The engines use hydrazine as fuel and nitrogen tetroxide as oxidizer. These are hypergolic propellants, meaning they ignite on contact. This removes the need for ignition hardware and increases reliability. The propellant is stored in six dedicated tanks mounted in the trunk, with a helium pressurant tank used to maintain stable flow to the engines. This propulsion system is completely independent from Dragon's primary fuel reserves. That means extended reboost burns do not reduce the fuel needed for docking, undocking, or deorbit. It also allows the engines to run for long periods. During the December 29th burn, Dragon fired its thrusters continuously for over 19 minutes. That burn increased the station's velocity by about 9 meters per second, which is roughly 20 miles per hour. In orbital mechanics, that is a significant change. That single burn delivered about one and a half times the effect of a typical progress reboost. Across the entire mission, Dragon is expected to cover between 25 and 33 percent of the ISS's yearly altitude maintenance needs. All of this hardware reaches orbit on Falcon 9, and that is a major part of why this works. Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket standing about 70 meters tall, capable of delivering up to 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit in expendable mode. When the first stage is recovered, it can still lift around 17,000 kilograms to orbit. That margin allows SpaceX to launch Dragon with extra fuel, propulsion hardware, and mission-specific equipment without pushing the rocket to its limits. Falcon 9 has completed over 300 orbital launches, making it the most flown active orbital rocket in history. Its success rate is above 98%. More importantly, Falcon 9 is the first rocket to land and reuse orbital class boosters routinely. More than 90% of Falcon 9 launches now end with a booster landing. Some individual Falcon 9 boosters have flown 20 times or more, something that was once considered unrealistic for an orbital rocket. This reuse capability has driven launch costs down. The listed price of a Falcon 9 launch is about $67 million, while traditional expendable rockets often exceed $100 million per launch and can only be used once. The rocket is just as important as the capsule itself. If the spacecraft is capable, but the launch system is unreliable or poorly integrated, the mission can still fail. A recent example of this is Boeing's Starliner program. Starliner's first uncrewed test flight in December 2019 failed. The second uncrewed mission also launched in May 2022, almost three years later. It reached the ISS, but again with problems. Several thrusters shut down unexpectedly, and thermal control issues were reported. The most serious failure happened during the first crewed Starliner mission in 2024. After reaching orbit, Starliner experienced multiple propulsion system issues. Several reaction control thrusters showed degraded performance, and helium leaks were detected in the propulsion system. Helium is used to pressurize the fuel lines. A leak directly affects the capsule's ability to maneuver and safely deorbit. Because of these issues, NASA decided it was not safe to bring the astronauts back to Earth using Starliner. The capsule returned to Earth without its crew. The astronauts were left aboard the ISS for about nine months, far longer than their original mission timeline. They eventually returned to Earth using a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule instead. Dragon launched on a Falcon 9 rocket docked normally and brought the astronauts home without issues. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.